friends, and welcome back to Cooking with Mr. Jeff. Today we are celebrating International Carrot Day. So what better way to do that than making a carrot cake? We're gonna dive right in here. I've got all of my ingredients assembled, and I'm gonna start by buttering and flouring my baking pans. So I have three nine-inch cake pans here. The author of this recipe, Preppy Kitchen, I actually used eight inch cake pans. This is what I have, so this is what we're doing. So we're buttering and flouring three nine inch cake pans, or whatever cake pans you have. This is gonna make a really, really big cake. So just be prepared, friends. Now if you wanted to, you could add parchment paper to the bottom of these, just as an extra kind of insurance policy. I'm not gonna do that because I'm lazy. <laughs> but I am definitely using plenty of butter here. Put a little flour in here. My cat obviously wants to be involved here. <laughs> Perfect. I just gave my carrots a good wash. Now we're gonna grate till we have a pound of carrot, or about three and a half cups. I've got my scale here, so I'm gonna be measuring, and I'm gonna be grating with the fine side. You can grate with the, the larger side if you want, but I like my carrots really shredded up. So I didn't peel these. Um, I just gave them a good wash, but if you really want to peel them, you can. I don't think it matters. Okay, that was a lot of grating, but I have a pound of shredded carrots. That was about eight carrots for me. Two of them were bigger than the rest. And again, one pound should be about three and a half cups. So I'm gonna start mixing that dry. So I'm gonna start, in Pluto. So I'm gonna start mixing my dry ingredients. I've got a bowl here and I've got a strainer to kind of sift it out, make sure there are no clumps of anything. Let's start with two and a half cups all purpose flour. We need two teaspoons baking soda and two teaspoons baking powder. We need a teaspoon and a half of salt, a half a teaspoon cinnamon, a half a teaspoon cardamom. This is so fragrant half a teaspoon allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of ginger. Give those a quick sift, and a whisk, just to make sure everything is really well combined, that all of those leavening agents and all of those spices are really distributed throughout the entire thing. This already smells like the most delicious thing I've ever made in my life. In a separate bowl, we're gonna combine our wet ingredients. So we want 3 fourths of a cup sour cream. We want 3 quarters of a cup vegetable oil. We want half a cup of applesauce. So the applesauce and sour cream here are really just to reduce the amount of oil and really make this cake moist and delicious. We want one and two thirds of a cup sugar. Now, okay, here's the deal. So I got this uh, recipe from Preppy Kitchen. The written recipe on the website is different than the recipe um, that that chef leads you through on YouTube. So the, the written recipe includes brown sugar. So the written recipe includes granulated white sugar and brown sugar but it's a frighteningly large amount. I'm sticking with what that chef leads us through on their YouTube channel and not the written recipe. We want two tablespoons vanilla, three eggs. Now I've left these out so they're come to room temperature. The chef really talks about how you want all of your ingredients at room temperature to let them combine nicely. And now we're gonna give all of this a whisk. Till it's completely combined. 
Now you could do this in a food processor if you want, I chose not to. You can also shred your carrots in a food processor, which would make it go a lot faster than I did. But I felt like doing it by hand. You can taste the love that way. Now before we throw this all together, before we get a cup of our nuts, you can use either walnuts or pecans. I'm gonna be using walnuts. So that's a cup of chopped walnuts. And you just wanna combine them with a little bit of the dry ingredients. Give them a toss. So this way, they won't all sink to the bottom. They'll just sit in the batter a little nicer. Nothing fancy happening here. That was more than I thought it was gonna be. We're gonna combine our wet and dry ingredients. Now, when we start to mix these, we wanna mix them almost completely. Then we're gonna add in our nuts and our carrots, fold those in, and that will combine it nicely the rest of the way. A bowl as deep as I'm using, you wanna really make sure you get to the bottom. You don't leave any pockets of flour down there. Okay, now I'm looking pretty, you can still see there's a few pockets of flour here, but I'm gonna add in my nuts and my carrots so that we don't over stir our dough. This is a big honking cake, so if you are gonna make this, make sure you have a bowl big enough to combine all of these in. Now we're just gonna fold everything in until it's combined. Is anybody else having Schitt's Creek flashbacks? Fold in the cheese. You fold it in. Really make sure you get all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. I'm super happy with how this is looking combined. And you can measure this into each of your cake pans. I'm not that fancy. I just give it a pour and try to make them look as even as possible. As always, you wanna make sure you don't fill them up to the top because these are going to rise when they're in the oven and you don't want a big old mess. And of course, preheat your oven, because I haven't done that yet. We're preheating to 350 degrees. <laughs> I knew I was gonna forget something. Now this was a new concept to me. The baker on Preppy Kitchen uses baking strips. I had never even heard of these before. Basically what these do is they go around your cake pan and they keep it from cooking with a dome shape. So if you use these, you should get nice flat layers. I've never used these before, so this will be a little experiment for me. If you don't use these, your cake will come out a little domed. You can um, trim that down so that you have nice even layers, or of course you can just add lots of frosting and hope it all works out. So when you're using baking strips, what you do is you soak them in water, wring them out, and then leave them damp so that when you're baking, the edges will cook more slowly than the middle, letting the middle cook all the way through without your edges getting burnt or dry or any of those awful things that we don't want when we're making cakes. So I bought these cake strips um, online. They're from Wilton. You can get them really cheap. You could make your own. It's really just a strip of fabric around your cake pan. So don't go spend lots and lots of money on these. These are pretty, pretty basic. So once my oven gets to 350, we're gonna throw these in and let them bake for about 40 to 45 minutes. Once I take them out and they're cooling, I'll start working on my frosting. So I'll be right back. My first timer just went off. Let's see how we're doing. Ah, oh, look how nice and flat those are. And we're clean, clean, clean. My cakes came out of the oven about 20 minutes ago. They're cooling just behind me. I'm gonna dive into my cream cheese frosting and get that started so that we can get this baby going. So I'm using three sticks of room temperature butter and two bricks of room temperature cream cheese. Let's give this a little whip just to get this all started. scraped on my sides and we're gonna start adding in our sugar. Now, okay friends, you're gonna fall over when you hear how much sugar, we're gonna be putting in almost two pounds of sugar into this. Now, if you are like, that is crazy pants, I'm not putting all that sugar 
into my batch of frosting. You don't have to. You can put in less. It will still be just as delicious, but um, it will be less firm. Cream cheese frosting tends to be a little bit on the softer side, and the more sugar you put in, the firmer it's going to be, the more it's going to hold up to heat, all kinds of other things. So this is a two pound bag. I'm putting in almost the whole bag. I'm going to give a good start here. We're going to get this started by hand so we don't make quite a mess. And we're going to throw a clean towel over this. Hopefully, contain some of the mess. Perfect. Let's add in a little more sugar. Ah! <laughs> There's one thing I'm really good at, friends. It's making a mess in the kitchen. Teaspoons of vanilla. Make sure we scrape all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. Let's give this a little taste test. It's pretty dang good. So I'm gonna get this into some pastry bags. Once my cake is completely cooled, I'm gonna start decorating. Again, cream cheese frosting is very temperamental when it comes to heat. So if you start decorating before your cake is cooled, it's gonna be a mess. Okay, I've got some of this cream cheese frosting into some pastry bags. I'm gonna start assembling my cake because they've completely cooled. First things first, I've got a turntable here with a plate on top. I'm just gonna put a little swoop. This is where you can play which of my cakes came up most beautifully. This one didn't cook as evenly and there was some tearing on this side. So that's definitely gonna be my base layer. I'm just gonna start with a little swoop in the middle. bubble. Okay, this is going to be a huge mess, friends. Here we go. I gave up. We're going to try harder with the next layer. Okay, my hands have been washed. See if we can do better this time. The top layer was my most beautiful, perfect, that came right out of the pan. Is this not a gigantic and lovely cake? Now, I just refilled some pastry bags, so here we go. It's gonna get friends. <laughs> the last thing we're gonna do is add a little walnut skirt. This is going to hide some of those things that just happened when we were doing our very best to ice. So I'm just gonna throw this right up here. And here is our finished product, carrot cake for International Carrot Day. You can tell I had a little bit of trouble uh, icing and decorating the cake, but if you are really into that, you could add carrot details on top. You could add a lot of different things. I am incredibly happy with how this came out. So let's get a slice and see how this tastes. This is decadent. The cake is nice and soft, moist. The frosting gives it a really, really nice sweetness. This is incredible. I am so pleased with how this came out. 
Please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments if you'd like to see any other recipes. And happy baking, friends. I hope you're staying healthy and safe. Bye-bye.